Today on Rainbow Guys DIY, I'm going to be planning up a quick little hanging basket for my mom for Mother's Day. Little short notice. I am challenging myself to do a shade basket. That's not something I normally do because I have tons of sun. Doesn't look like it at the moment because it's kind of late in the evening. It's about seven o'clock. Um, but I have this beautiful begonia. Just these really gorgeous red flowers. It just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, these are probably one of the most famous shade flowers out there. Uh, this is a tuberous begonia. Uh, you can actually pull these out of your arrangements in the fall before the first even slight frost and get them planted in like a container. You can put them inside. They do very good as house plants. Um, another one I have is another classic shade and that is the Impatient. Uh, these are grown as annuals here in zone 8b. Uh, this is just a little accent color. This one is a little beat up at the nursery, but I think it's going to turn out really good. I, and then this one, which wilted out real quick, I literally got these yesterday and this one's already wilting. Um, but this is something I haven't actually played with before. It is a Myosotis sylvatica. I don't know what the common name for that is. Normally I have the opposite problem. I know what the common name is. I don't know what the actual binomial Latin name is. Um, but this is Victoria Blue. Uh, it has these really cute, I don't know if you can really see them, I hope it focuses for you. These really cute little blue flowers. Um, this is for my mom for Mother's Day. Her birthday's in February, so you can't really do like flowers for her birthday. But I know that she likes red, white, and blue. I'm going to be using red, white, and then blue. And then for trailers or spillers, uh, I got these two. Uh, Dichondra Silver Falls, which is going to be found because she lives in Silverton, which is literally the gateway to Silver Falls State Park here in Oregon. So I think that's going to be really special for her. I'm going to get these planted up with some black bold potting, and then I'm going to be using the Espoma Flower Tone Fertilizer, which is going to really boost the flowers on all of these plants, except for these because they don't flower. If they do flower, trim off the flowers. Otherwise, yeah, we don't grow these for the flowers. Um, this is just a basket. I picked it up at the Portland Nursery, I think. I think it was it was less than $15, and it's actually really pretty. It's got a nice cocoa fiber lining. I'm just going to take off the tag. This is from Ostram Home and Garden. Yeah, it was $14.99, and you can visit them at ostram.com, A-U-S-T-R-A-M.com. I'm going to get to it, get this planted up, and then we will show you the end results. First things first, centerpiece. Just take a small hole for it. And we're using sort of a two for centerpiece. It's going to depend on where you look at the basket. The roots are in really good shape on this. They are not bound to the nursery can at all. So I'm just going to pop that a little bit more to the side here. And with hanging baskets, I always like to make sure that things, if they can, kind of tilt out a little bit. You're going to be seeing this probably close to eye level, right about here. So you want to make sure you're actually able to see the flowers. I just have it tilted up a little bit on a little paper stone back here so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, and then we have, this one is the Myosotis sylvatica. Um, it's really cute. It's very petite flowers. Um, I will water this in very thoroughly because this is very dry. This one feels a little bit more root bound. Oh my! Yeah. So when you have roots like this, you really want to kind of just tease them, massage them up, loosen them. Just kind of break their growth habit and make sure there's lots of room for them to grow. Oh, making a mess. So that's just going to go right in there, basically towards the middle. And then we are going to pop one of the white impatience, I think, just right here. This is actually really hard to do from behind. So we've got another one of the impatient. Just going to pop that thing right here.
I made one big mistake here. I totally forgot to fertilize. So I'm just going to open the bag. I'm actually just going to put it on top of the soil and kind of work it into the top there. This is not ideal by any means, but it is better than ripping all of the plants out. And you just kind of want to get it in between all of the root balls. You want to kind of tease it into the soil like so, kind of mix it around. And then I was already going to water this pretty heavily because a lot of these plants are really dry. So that's really going to get in and saturate with the soil. So I'm not too worried about not having fertilized at the base. These all have fairly shallow root systems. So I am not worried in the slightest. I'm gonna trim up these begonias here just a little bit. I brought out scissors obviously to open the bag, but they're gonna do some double duty here. And with the flowers, you wanna get as close to the main stem as possible and not cut off too many leaves. So just kind of like that. And then just kind of take a glance at everything. If there's any flowers that seem spent, you wanna get rid of those. I think that was the main troublemaker. But then other than that, we basically have a fully formed hanging basket. Of course I got that all tangled. <laughs> oh, what a mess. There we go. Perfect. It's a good, nice looking hanging basket right there. I think she'll love it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram at RainbowGuysDIY. See you next time.